Good morning. This is Unlock Circuits 18 EC42 Module 2 Mass Integral Capacitance and High Frequency Model, which is part two. Here we are considering the high frequency model. In the last uh, lecture, we just considered the mass integral capacitance, where we considered the two integral capacitances types. One is the uh, gate capacitive effect, the second is the junction capacitances, and uh, now we will be seeing the high frequency model. So the high frequency model is like this. The here we have the four different capacitors between the drain and the substrate, between the gate and the substrate, that's why it is CGS, between the gate and the drain, that's why it is CGT and so on. In addition to the uh, model which is there over here, which is the low frequency model. So there we have the dependent, two dependent current source, GMVGS and GMB. VBS and the output resistance which is R0. We generally find that the source is connected to the uh, substrate. If the source is connected to the substrate, then CSB will no more be there and, and the uh, what you call C VBS will be equal to zero. Therefore, this current will uh, not be present at all. So this will be open. So we are left with only this and this and the capacitance here will be directly connected to the source because the substrate and the source are shorted together. And the same is shown over here where C, the CGDB, CDB is between the drain and the uh, substrate and that substrate is connected to the source. And we have the two resistor, two uh, capacitors over here and then the low frequency model over here. Generally, we find that CDB is uh, very, very small, and that's why it is neglected. So in this figure, you can see that we have just removed this because we have neglected the value of CDB. Now, the most important thing over here is the MOSFET unity gain frequency, FT, and uh, that is the, uh, it, you know, an amplifier should have the gain which is more than one, and the frequency at which uh, it is exactly equal to one is equal to the unity gain frequency or what is known as the transition frequency. And this is a very important parameter because you should see that the gain of the amplifier should not fall down below one. If it falls down below one, uh, then it, it is of no use to us. And if the frequency of operation goes above this FT, then definitely the gain also is going to fall below one. So FT is a very important parameter. Now you can see that here, you know, what, what we have written over here is the CGD, the impedance due to this will be one by S CGD in terms of the Laplace parameter S and S can always be replaced by J omega and the admittance of that will be one by the impedance and that will be uh, CGD. So if you see here, this, this is the point which corresponds to the node uh, where we can apply the KCL and then I0 is entering, yes, CGD, VGS is entering and GM VGS is leaving. So this current is equal to the sum of these two currents. So therefore we can write I0 is equal to GM VGS minus SCGD into VGS. And that is what we have mentioned over here. We need to determine the short circuit current gain, which is I0 by uh, I0 by II. What we are trying to do in this figure is we are shorting the output and we are giving a input uh, current so current source at the input psi, and then trying to find the short circuit current gain I0 by II. So in this case, I0 uh, plus this current will be equal to this and that will give us I0 is equal to this minus this. And that is what is shown over here. Now, in, in general, we see that the CGD is very small and hence we can neglect this compared to this value. Therefore, I0 can be written as I0 is equal to GMVGS. Further, we also see that when we try to find the Thevenin's equivalent voltage between this point and this point, that is the VGS itself, then we need to find, we need to uh, just uh, what you call, uh, it's already shorted over here. 
this is shorted that means the resistance will not be there over here whatever current is there will flow here so and that value will give us when it is shorted then uh, what you call these two are going to come in parallel to each other cgd and cgs are going to come in parallel to each other so once they come in parallel then the value of uh, the ii will be equal to the value of vgs divided by s multiplied by cgs plus cgd and that is what is shown here vgs is equal to ii by s uh, multiplied by cgs plus cgd that is because when the capacitors come in parallel then they get added up now we can substitute this vgs into this equation wherein we'll get i naught is equal to gm multiplied by ii divided by s into CGS plus CGD and II we can take on the other side like this here so that we can get GM by S into CGS plus CGD and this is the short circuit current here. Now if this value is equal to 1 then we say that it is unity gain and at that time what is the value of the omega is what we need to find when this value is uh, 1 omega will be equal to omega t therefore omega t will be gm by cgs plus uh, cgd and that is what we have written over here so for the above thing to become above ratio to become unity we will have wt is equal to gm by cgs plus cgd ft will be wt divided by 2 pi the ft is nothing but the frequency in uh, hertz the omega t is the frequency in radians per second. So ft will be gm divided by 2 pi cgs plus cgd. Typically the ft ranges from 100 megahertz for older technologies to many gigahertz. Older technologies of, are of 5 micrometer CMOS might be and the new technologies will be more improved value of the micrometer 0.13 micrometer CMOS. So smaller the device, smaller are the internal capacitance, and since the capacitance is simply given by the formula epsilon a d, making the device 10 times smaller makes the area 100 times smaller, while the separation becomes 10 times smaller, hence capacitance becomes 10 times smaller. On the whole, this is the frequency model, and the, these are the formulas from which we can find the different parameters, different capacitance, and the uh, what you call uh, the unity gain frequency, or what is known as the transition frequency. Now, these are the two uh, exercises, numerical exercises, which you can try to solve by yourself and try to see whether you'll get these answers at all on your own. However, otherwise, before uh, you'll, you'll be, uh, you know doing an additional video for the solution of this but please remember that on your own it's better to try and then compare with what is there in the video so with this we come to the end of this video. thank you